I think it was a terrific game to see how these guys played. The one thing I said to them before in the locker room, I said, you guys face pressure that no team in the history of the game has faced, well, really all year, but, but uh, being down 14 against Garner Webb, I said, and you did not panic in that moment, and you fought, and you found a way out. I said, that, I think, has prepared you for this moment to be able to handle the pressure or the, the intensity of a national championship game. And these guys stepped up. What, DeAndre, is that your career high, 27? Yeah. What, a, what a game to have it. I mean, he was terrific. Ty, Ty, these three all year have been unbelievable. And if one was a little off, someone picked up in the team. So I, it was... To me, that was, it appeared, from my standpoint, to be a high-level game. And, uh, you know, we scored 85. I don't, that was in that setting, so good stuff. Questions for the student-athletes. Let's start up front. Jeff. Uh, Jeff White, Virginia Sports. DeAndre, what, what was the difference for you in the second half? Did anyone say anything to you at halftime? Um, no. Uh, I just tried to be aggressive. Um, I was aggressive in the first half, I believe, but my shots just weren't falling. And I just tried to do the same thing in the second half, and my, my shots were falling. So um, just staying aggressive, that's it. All the way to the back of the room. David, will use that back right microphone. Olivia's. DeAndre, back here, DeAndre. David Teal with the Daily Press and Newport News. On the last sequence in regulation, just before you hit the three as you're coming down court, it appeared that Coach Bennett said something to you from the bench. Did he indeed, and do you recall what he said right before you got that look from the right corner to tie it? Yeah, he was just telling me to play uh, that we were running, because uh, I don't think I knew it. Um, he was just relaying the play to me, and yeah, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, it was a great, uh, I'm not supposed to talk, never mind. So. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great play, he, he drew it up. No, I didn't mean that, I was saying it was a great, <laughs> it was a great scream by Kyle. We were just, I was trying to tell him, this, we're running this action, and I thought we'd get it, so sorry. How about that play? What? <laughs> the three you hit the same in the overtime. Like, uh, You're talking about M4N, right? Oh, was it, bro? That was regular M. I do to you. It was, all right. It was a great pass. And a great <laughs> <laughs> we're a little yeah, confused on which play you're talking about. Maybe we'll get back to it. Let's go to the right of the aisle. Mike. Hi, thanks. Kyle and Ty, uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times uh, Dispatch. A year ago, sitting at the podium, the emotions you felt to, to be here now as a national champion, can you guys just try to put into words what you're feeling right now? And Mike, who is that for? All right, Ty first, please, then Kyle. I'm about to say, don't, don't ask me because I can't yet. Um, this is, you know, forget last year. This is just everything you dream of since you're a little kid. You know what I mean? I'm not even thinking about UMBC right now. Um, I'm just thinking this is a dream come true. And, it's even more than that because you, you never even imagine you'll be able to spend a year with people you're, you actually love, you know what I mean, your teammates and your coaches. And, you know, not a lot of people get along like we do. So to share this moment with them is unbelievable. Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Um, we came in together and, and said that we were going to win a national championship. And, you know, to be able to hug each other with confetti going everywhere and say we did it, it's a, you know, the, the greatest feeling I've ever felt in basketball. To the left of the aisle, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, Kyle, first of all, have you changed your screensaver yet or your Twitter avatar, and what's it going to be? No, I'll, I'll get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, too, when you, this is kind of a follow-up, but when you were writing the letters, what did you visualize in your mind going from that to this, and, and how closely does it re resemble that if you did? Yeah, I think everyone on the team, as soon as the buzzer sound sounded and, you know, we were done um, with the press conference and stuff, that we knew we all had the same goal in mind for next year, and that was to win a national championship. Um, you know, we've all had our own battles, and um, I said earlier that it's a really special group because we all had the same why amongst other whys, but to, to share the same one and, you know, to battle through everything we battled through and come out on top is, is a, you know, fantastic feeling. To the right of the aisle in the center, Jeff. Uh, you said to me that when you got back to campus last time, you had the hood on, head down. What's it going to be like now? What, what is this all like for you right now? I mean, you said you haven't even shed a tear. Have any of you shed a tear yet? I have. You did. Yeah. The other two haven't. Uh, when did you shed a tear, Ty? Um, when I hugged my... That floater in regulation. I <laughs> 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 
thing. If I made that, they would have scored. We would have lost. But uh, you know, um, when I hugged my mom and dad and my brother, um, they were crying, so you know, I couldn't help it. Front row to the right side. Ty, what a roller coaster ride. Just talk about the whole tournament in general and just your mentality going in with these last second wins all the time. Just to remain faithful to the little things. Coach Bennett always talks about staying faithful, and he, he, you know, he told us, you know, don't grow weary in doing good. And that's for every, that's a every possession mindset. It's a, a life mindset, you know. So you just play to the buzz, play to that buzzer sounds. And you know, the fact that I missed that floater in regulation, and Coach Bennett called it the exact same play, it just shows, you know, how much my teammates believe in me, how much he believes in me, and. Um, you know, we just played to that buzzer sounds. We all believe in each other, and it's, you know, the most special team I've, I've ever been on. Up front on the left side. Uh, Ty, you talked yesterday about how growing up you would watch national championship games, staying up late to watch them. You mentioned the Mario Chalmers shot. I mean, what's it like knowing that, you know, little kids probably stayed up past, bed their, past their bedtime watching, but you guys just did? Yeah, it's... Unreal, you know. I haven't really, you know, thought about all that stuff yet. I haven't really had time to reflect on anything. You know, I just been trying to enjoy the moment, and yeah, it still don't feel real. It still doesn't feel real. Come on, bro, talk properly. <laughs> to the left of the aisle, midway back. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times. This is for Kyle. Kind of the question was kind of asked before, but how much did last weekend's games help prepare you guys for? A stretch run like this and particularly also the the game the semifinal game yeah absolutely I think we've taken you know every experience that we've been through together and tried to uh, use it a way that could you know propel us to a national championship um, um, you know the, all those close games and you know all the practices where we practice uh, late game situations we tried to execute and we were very disciplined and I think that uh, got us through a lot of games along with uh, you know just trying to leave it all on the floor, and I think we uh, succeeded at those things. On the right side, fourth row, and this will be the final question for the student athletes before they head back to the locker room. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. This is for Kyle and Ty. It's a long <laughs> haul to a national championship for any team, uh, probably a little bit longer for you guys. Can you imagine going through it and surviving it and getting to this point without, with any other coach other than Coach Bennett? first we'll go straight down the line Ty you can go first then Kyle then Deion. Um, why would it be longer for us than other teams though perhaps because you don't want to mention or think about what happened how last year oh, ended like oh okay yeah um, yeah for us it actually wasn't like that you know what I mean it last year it, it drew us um, even closer together and you know it made us enjoy you know, every part of the season even more. Um, it made us enjoy each other's company more on the road. Um, we grew closer together off the court. So it wasn't like a, a rush to get to this championship game and, and then win it so the season could be over so we could prove all you guys wrong. It was more just, you know, we grew even more united um, and we enjoyed every part of the season. And then obviously to finish the year like this is unreal. And to answer your question, I don't know, we couldn't have done this with any other coach. Kyle. Yeah, to expand more on that, um, you know, Coach said something that really resonated with us um, is to run to the start line, not the finish line. And we've done that um, every single game this year. You know, joy is in the competition. <laughs> um, but, you know, to be able to give him a national championship and do it for him, the, the program and our families, it, it means the world. And I wish I had the words, but it just still does not feel real. DeAndre. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Joy is in the competition, like I said. Um, this is a great win for our program, great win for our coach. Um, we worked for this all off season, and all that work just paid off. We want to congratulate and thank Ty, Kyle, and DeAndre. They're going to head back to the Virginia locker room, which is open for student athlete availability job, right now. Good job. You got this. <laughs> First question for Coach Bennett is going to come all the way on the right side. Hey, Coach Bennett. Zach Peerless, Augusta Free Press. There's a picture in your house you've talked about before with these three guys and Jay Huff as yeah. that part of that 2016 class. They've seen a lot of things now in their time at UVA. 
what are the emotions now attached to that picture and you know how does this change that picture and the feelings that you'll see when you see it yeah when they came on the recruiting visit um i remember telling them look you're the foundation has been laid uh, by guys you know joe and malcolm were here and all the guys who went before and we had won some ACC championships. We've been to the Elite Eight. I said, we're asking you to build on that foundation and even at that house, uh, and that's gonna be the hardest step. But if you're willing, I said, we'll, we'll take a chance at it. That's why I mentioned the Rocky poster. I just, I said, I want guys who want a chance at a title fight. And to see them come in either as young men or boys and grow into men, th this season, and you know, I'll, I'll mention what happened last year, that, that can only mature you. Um, I, I don't know of anything else that would allow these guys to be able to handle this situation and to play through stuff and to have a perspective and a poise and resiliency unless they went through something that hard. And um, they're very, they're really good players. They don't probably get enough credit. Well, I think some of them do for their talent, but they had something different about them collectively. I just, um, one of our themes, why I told them before the Auburn game, I said, just bring your two fish and five loaves. It's a story in the Bible. And I said, it'll be enough. I said, it'll, it'll be enough for the masses. I said, when you guys play the right way, the collectiveness of it takes over, and I've watched it, and I've stepped back, and I've seen this, and now I've seen them mature through everything, and for them to do what they did, you know, and how they've won, it's a great story. It really is. On the right side, left of the aisle, Dan. Hey, Tony, Dan Wolken, USA Today. Congratulations, first Thank of you. all. Um, as the game went on from the perspective of somebody who's definitely not a coach, it seemed like Texas Tech was trying to do more and more things to get someone other than DeAndre onto Culver. How did you see that? Yeah. Why did DeAndre have so much success against Culver? And, and how did you just sort of evaluate his defensive performance? That was the matchup. Let me see his stats. Ooh, 5 of 22. I didn't realize he, this was that. And he's such a talented player. We wanted that matchup. We really wanted to have that matchup. So Chris, Coach Beard did a great job of like, they went small. When they went small, we had a match and go small. Braxton did a great job and we wanted to switch the ball screens. And then, then we were a little worried because he is so good, but um, we just tried to make it happen as much as possible. And Dre just made him work to get shots. DeAndre, I mean, he was just named the defensive player of the year and his length and his ability to lock in and slide is as good as most. And I thought, you know, that was a great two-way performance, defensively and offensively in this game, in this setting. And he saved his best for last. And that tells you there's something in that young man. And he's got more, he's scratching the surface. But um, we had to have that, because I don't know if we had anybody else one-on-one -on -one who could guard him. And I said, it comes down to making plays. Yes, offensively, but it comes down to making plays defensively. And I thought he did that and made, made um, uh, Culver earn, certainly, Jared. Left to the center aisle, Doug. Yeah, I was, uh, you kind of alluded to it, but offensively it seemed as if DeAndre took charge there at the end. Do you tell him to take charge or something? Sometimes it seems like he's, you know, trying not to take yeah, over. Yeah, that's, you know, DeAndre usually lets it come, and that, he, he, I think he grew up in a way in this tournament in the second half of the Auburn game, and definitely, and he was getting his shots, but he just, he, he, you saw it in him, and, and that, when he puts that into it, boy, it's, he's special. But, no, he, we were trying to get him the ball. Ty is so good, and our players, they understand. You know, he's like, all right, we got to get him the ball in these situations and go to work. And, you know, we did call. I'm not sure if I can answer the question. We did call an action for him to hit that three in the corner, and then one time Ty made a great pass. But um, he, um, yeah, I thought he really showed an aggressiveness that we needed. You need your – top players to step up and make plays, and he did it on both ends. Right at the center aisle, Mike, we're going to use the front left microphone now. Uh, Tony, Mike Barber, uh, Richmond Times Dispatch. I believe you were 12 for 12 at the free throw line yes. in the overtime. Um, uh, can you just speak to, one, that the poise your guys showed yes. in the overtime, and also the, did the previous games prepare them for, uh, they didn't seem either out of gas, they didn't seem too emotional in handling the overtime? No, well, I tell you, we, we, we had three... Saturday, Monday games. We played Duke at home, and then we had to go to Carolina. And I, I think I said this in the podium before, um, but I said this is how it's going to be in the tournament, and this is how we're going to prepare on Sunday. And, and we did that every time we had those games, and we did it in the NCAA tournament, the day in between. And they knew what to expect. And I said, you're built for this. You're prepared for this because this is what we did. And we started that process in January in that 
Carol or Duke Carolina weekend, and I said, just get after it. And we worked in between. Um, you know, a lot of people just walked through. I actually, I don't know what people do. I just know from my experience as a coach in the Pac-10 how important that day is in between and how you just get to prepare well, prepare well, and get after it. And so I, I think they, they stepped in the moment. They faced pressure through the year, through the tournament, and all that stuff played into it. And that a lot goes to our strength coach, Mike Curtis. I mean, he has those guys as finely tuned machines, and, and uh, they just they work. We were smart at the end of the year with how much rest we gave them and prepared them. It's just you know a balance, and it obviously it, it hit. In the center, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Tony, this is a two-parter. You, you said that this, the, you know, what happened last year yep. really forged them this year, but there are a lot of people twice their age that wouldn't have been able to do this. Nope. What is it about them that allowed them to do that? And then also tonight, they didn't just seem to survive this. They seem to really be having fun tonight. Yep. And is that part of it? Yeah, we, uh, the quote that DeAndre said, and I told them this, the, it's about – the joy of competition and the fun in the pursuit of a championship, you know, and that, I, I love it. And they, um, the quote that my wife actually, I just saw, she went to that TED talk and it, it, you talk about being almost prophetic, what that says, if you learn to use it right, the adversity, it will buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone any other way. And I don't know, if, maybe we could have, but I don't know, going through what we did last year, and having to, you know, it helped me as a coach. All the stuff that they talked about, I think, bought us a ticket to a national championship. And, and at the time, you went to thought it, but I, they were battle tested. They were, you, you can't go through the stuff that no one's experienced. And again, it is a game. We talked about it, but they had to deal with things, uh, their own stuff inside, and the opinion of others, and just come together and tighten it in a way. And they went after it in terms of developing their own game. And, um, and then how they played, they were a joy to coach. I mean, they worked. And anything I said, yes, sir, they would just go after it. And we pushed them hard, but we also loved on them, too. And I think it was the balance of that. And they knew it. And they knew we were in this together. That's why we said, this is our united pursuit. That's, that was our theme. And I love that because it was, it was everything we had. On the right side, toward the back. Coach Kyle Guy, most outstanding tournament player. Um, why do you think he... he is at his best when the lights are brightest. Yeah. Um, I got a text from Dabo Sweeney who said, uh, let the light shine in you, that shines in you, be brighter than the light that shines on you. And I think he, he has something in him. I love that quote. I don't know where it was, but I thought it was so good. Um, and I shared it with the guys. And he, he has something in big games um, and makes plays. That it's just he, he has it in him. I know he's a man of, young man of faith, and he has great confidence in himself. And, um, you know, he's honest, and he just, he's got it. And, and he did it again and made big shots, and um, I've seen that from little on. I mean, you look at him, I mean, he's not the most physical guy, but he just, it's inside. Ty has that in him, and so does Kyle, and DeAndre showed it tonight. DeAndre has all the ability in the world, and that's, that's coming, and, and Kihei has it, and I can go down the list, but that's what you look for. Um, you take guys who are tough mentally and skilled and smart, and have enough athleticism, and you can be really good. On the right side, all the way back, Chuck. Yeah, um, Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Uh, Tony, for you, has the pain gone away completely now? Yeah, I mean, you, you have scars, right? <laughs> you have a scar, and it reminds you of that. But, um, you know, it, it's a memory, and I... I does it go away completely? No, I wish that wouldn't have happened in some ways. Now I say, well, if it, it bought us a ticket here, so be it. But uh, it, uh, I'm thankful in a way for what happened because it did. It drew me closer, most importantly, to my faith in the Lord, drew me closer to my, my wife and children just because I say you realize what's unconditional in those spots when the world's telling you you're a failure, you're a loser, and you're the worst thing going and all that stuff. You say, okay. What, what really matters, and it pushed me to that in a way, and then it, it drove me to, I think as a staff, we became better. We had to look at how can we change if we're in this spot again, and we play certain teams, and we adjusted some things. That helped, and again, all the lessons from that. So is the pain gone? Or I, I mean, I still feel a little, ugh, because I remember that feeling, but I, I think I'm okay. <laughs> Up front? 
Coach Schaefer Murray, uh, Washington Sports Network. Um, I'm not sure if you know this, but you still have a huge fan base in the Northwest. Um, just talk about how your days at Wazoo and those teams with Rochester and Lowe and, and Baines, and just talk about how they kind of just propelled you on your, sure. on your way. Derek Lowe was here, Ben Johnson, who's my dear friend and coach. Taylor Rochesti was at the games. I think David Harmeling was here. Jeff Varum was here. These are guys that I played for. Um, I was given a chance by J Jim Sterk and Ann McCoy. Um, to take that job. My dad came out of retirement, that whole story. Those were my formative years, and we did special things there. And um, it prepared me in ways that allowed me, honestly, to take chances on guys like Ty Jerome, Kyle Guy, guys that I saw because I had to do that out at Washington State. And I realized if their heart is right and their character is right and they're tough and they're skilled, you can maybe miss in some areas, but, but that will end up taking you further than maybe just looking at just talent alone or skimping and some others. So that was everything. And the final question for the national championship coach. <laughs> Tony, Steve Futterman from CBS News. Uh, you know, a great philosopher might say one can only appreciate the highest of highs if one has experienced the lowest of lows. And in a sports sense, in a basketball NCAA playoff sense, you have had both those experiences. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Uh, do, you, do you think that makes this special because you understand the depths that you're going to appreciate the heights tonight? Yeah, I think for sure it added to it. Um, it, it absolutely. You, it makes you appreciate it. I, I, never did, I never thought of myself being a national championship coach. I wasn't even going to really get into coaching. I wasn't crazy about it. I loved playing. And then, you know, I saw my dad's team go to the Final Four. I was a volunteer manager, and I got into it. Um, I love the young men. I love the game. Um, but it's not my end-all, be-all. I, I, I just, I think there was a bigger plan going on here, and I was, I wouldn't need it, but I was used in it, and I hope um, that, you know, it's a message for some people that there's, there can be hope and joy and resiliency, and um, I'm thankful for what happened. That's what I did at the end. I just, when that horn went off, I just put my head down, and I said, thank you. I'm humbled, Lord because I don't deserve to be in this spot, but you chose me to be here, and I'll give thanks. And I told our guys in the locker room, I just said, put your arms around each other. I said, take a look at every guy in here. Look at each other. I said, promise me you will remain humble and thankful for this. Don't let this change you. It's, it doesn't have to. We'll have memories. We'll be at each other's weddings, or I'll be at their weddings. <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> um, but um, stay humble and stay thankful. That, it's, a, it's a great story. That's probably the best way I can end this. It's a great story. I want to thank Coach Bennett yep. for appearing here all week long and taking our <laughs> questions, and congratulations, Coach. Thank you.